Hi, and welcome to Talk Straight Bible. We are your hosts, Jeremiah and Rafina Antonetti. We're here to do one thing, folks. And that's talk straight about the Bible. Nothing better, nothing more powerful than the Word of God. Amen to that. Amen. Jesus said that the words he spoke to the disciples and the people of his day, he said, my word, the words I speak to you are both spirit and life. He took us right back to Genesis, you know. Spirit, for the Spirit of God was moving upon the face of the deep, and then God said, let there be light. Those two together is spirit and life. Mm. And so right back to Genesis, he takes us. I always tell people, if you everything you share, if you can't take it back to Genesis chapter 1, for the first four verses, I say first three verses, you probably didn't hear it right. But everything that the Lord, the Lord says is spirit and life. Amen. And as we know, we are on Proverbs chapter 7. Yes, yes, yes. yes and yes. this is the fifth part of <laughs> Proverbs chapter 7, but it's the fourth part of the Shama. Mm. And I'm going to read those three verses, three verses. One, one, two, three, and then we're going to go on, okay? Proverbs 7, 1 through 3. My son, keep my words and treasure my commandments within you. Keep my commandments and live, and keep my teaching and law as the apple of your eye. Bind them on your fingers, write them on the tablet of your heart. So we see as in previous chapters of Proverbs, Solomon urges his son to live according to his teaching. Like something expensive and worth protecting. And these instructions should be valued. Therefore, the Lord instructed fathers to be faithful, to teach the laws to their children. They were to do this when at home, when traveling, and when resting, and when working. And we're going to see that in Deuteronomy because that is part of the Shama. We have been on Proverbs 7, 1 through 3, which opened up the Shama to us. And we wanted to go a little deeper on why this prayer or these words were so important for Solomon. And what's interesting also, as you say that, in Luke chapter eleven twenty eight, it says, But he said, Jesus, yes, rather, blessed are they who hear the word of God and keep it. Mm. Keep it. And mm. as being a Jew, he was taking us, believe it or not, taking us back to Genesis, <laughs> where he made up, he created a man, put him in the garden, and said to keep it. Same thing, Shema. Keep it, protect it, observe it, preserve it. Amen. And that's why Solomon counseled his son to follow the patterns that God established in the early history of Israel. And why it is it was so urgent for that generation to be familiar with God's law, just like it is today. Why is it important for us as Christians to hear the word over and over? Well, first of all, repetition is good for us, and it's a safeguard, according to Paul. But the Bible also says, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That is why the Lord was so adamant about giving his word to Moses and Moses in turn reciting it to the people and the people reciting it to their people and so on and so on. That we would understand to trust and have faith in the Lord. And now we have Solomon reciting it to his own son. And the Lord is our focus today. It is our focus. The Lord should be your focus every single day. <laughs> <laughs> Today we're going to talk about the Lord. And we're going, to, we're going to be reading. I'm going to read. Jeremiah's going to say something. And then we're going to read Deuteronomy, the Shema. Well, a, quick, a quick note on, on Proverbs 7, especially 1 through 5. It is really you know, telling us that he was warning his sons about sexual activity. Mm -hmm. Notice that sexual activity is very important to God. Even Paul speaks about sexual activity outside of marriage, fornication, etc. The whole concept here is that God was teaching Israel and wanted them to do one thing. You are not to make love to any other gods. Mm. Amen. Amen. I am the Lord. You are not to bow down to any other gods, which is equivalent to within sex within uh, with, with sex within a marriage 
intimacy mm. is what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you go to the land, you are not to mingle right. with those people who have their spiritual sexual desires on other gods because you will worship them. That's right. That's right. And that's what happened when they did not heed the word of the Lord. They gave in to the spiritual adultery that God was warning them. There were many gods in all the lands, false gods, still called gods, little g. But he tells them, I am the capital G, your God, your Lord. And so this is associated with faithfulness to God against and protecting us against false gods. And, and it's no wonder that Solomon would teach his son that because he himself allowed his wives and concubines to serve their gods. These were, many of them were foreign women and they had their own gods and he allowed them to set up temples for these gods. And so there is no question that Solomon had few little issues himself on following the Torah. But he also knew not to bring them into the temple. Mm -hmm. Okay, he had reverence. He knew that's why he that, built. That's why he, he built. Allowed that's them right. To build their own. He says mm -hmm. that he built his house over here in the temple, but he built their wife's house way over there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he had reverence. Thank God. Even backsliders have reverence, and we thank God that he speaks to backsliders. Oh, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter where people are. He knows who they are, and he will open their eyes. But this is about being faithful to the Lord, and why. The Lord. All right. And 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 so we're going to read Deuteronomy because that first three verses in chapter seven is talking and bringing his son back to this. Shama, Yeshu, um, Israel, Adonai, Alohinu, Adonai, Ekad. Hear, O Israel, Adonai, our God, Adonai is one. And you are to love Adonai, your mm, God, mm -hmm. with all your heart, all your being, all your resources. These words, which I am ordering you today, are to be on your heart. Mm. And you are to teach them carefully to your children. You are to talk about them when you sit at home, when you're traveling on the road, when you lie down, when you get up, tie them on your hand as a sign, put them on the front of your headband, of your headband, around your forehead, and write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Though I said, I read here the word Adonai as God, which is his name. It's another name for mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. Yahweh also pops up frequently. Both Adonai and Yahweh meaning the Lord. Adonai gives us more of a hint about what the Lord's role is in our lives. Adonai means master or Lord. Showing God has sovereignty over us. And at some point in history, in Israel's history, um, the rabbis concluded that God's personal name was too transcendent, too holy for humans to pronounce. When reading from the Hebrew Bible, which was written without vowels, they would substitute Adonai for Yahweh, which they spelled Y-H-W-H. -H. Well, you know, one of the things I want to say before we go on, there is a tremendous movement among the Gentiles especially, mm -hmm. that means the non-Christian, the non-Jews, the non in, in the world to come back to the roots mm -hmm. from where they came. And that's, you know, that's Jewish teaching. But let me just say this also, okay? We don't have to tie uh, belts around our hands and put them on our foreheads the way they do in order for us to be close to God. I need to say that because, because people say, what are you saying now, that we have to do this? No. However, if you want to do that's your business, that's between you and God. However, what's important is that we keep our hand on the word of the Lord every mm -hmm. day and we wrap the word of God around right. our lives, around our, our minds, minds. Yes. around our hearts. This yes. is what it's all about. Yes. But because we have a physical, a physical picture of what's going on, it will give us a spiritual mm -hmm. understanding mm -hmm. of what we're to do as New Testament believers. 
Mm-hmm. Now, what's interesting that when you, when you know, I was talking yesterday about Jesus Christ, and I'm always talking about the Lord Jesus. Yes. But when he appeared for the third time at the sea and they were fishing, mm-hmm. and the Bible says, you know, that they were fishing and then he asked, you know, children, do you have, did you ca- catch anything? They said, no, and we, you got to go back yesterday, I told a little bit about the story. But, you know, Peter, when John told him, it is the Lord, it is the Lord, it is the Lord, Peter wrapped himself in a garment and, mm. and he threw himself into the sea. That's what the Bible says. I love that. And you know what? When you know the Lord Jesus Christ, you will throw yourself into the sea of his love. Amen. Because it is the Lord. And man, he swam, he swam to shore and they, you know, the Lord said to bring in the fish and Peter helped him. And why did he do that? The Bible says the net did not break. Mm. Okay, 153 large fish, but it did not break. That's what the Bible says. And there's a reason that Jesus told him, pull him in. The net did not break. Because those 153 fish represent, I am God. Mm. When you look at the spelling of God, El, we have Elohim, we have, bless his holy name, Yahweh. Mm -hmm. When we have these names, they spell out something. Mm. And so when Jesus told him to pull in the net and it did not break, why didn't it break? Because I am God. Now, the Lord, I am the Lord, Adonai. Now, the... The Lord, Yahweh, and we have to, every time you say the name of Yahweh, you must bless him. That's why it is so important to understand how sacred, how beautiful is that name, that we just don't throw it out of our lips. It has to be with worship when you say Yahweh. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Yes. Now, the reason, even today, when the Jews write the Torah, when they make the copy of the Torah, it has to be letter by letter, space by faith, space, everything. And every time that they every time they come to that name, Yahweh, thank you, Lord, they actually wash their hands and take up another pen and write his name. That's how sacred that name is. And the Bible says that the, the people will sanctify his name. And we are to set aside the name of God, whether it be Yeshua, whether it be Yahweh, thank you, Lord, whether it be, you know, we say Adonai, Elohim, it must be sacred upon our lips Mm -hmm. because the Lord is one. Mm -hmm. And so we see for the first time the word Lord in Genesis Chapter 2, and I want to just show you this. Chapter 2, verse 4 says, These are the generations of the heavens of the earth, and and of the earth, when they were created in that day, the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Notice he says the Lord God, because the the Lord God here, I'm just going to say to you real quick, it's interesting, it goes Elohim, Elohim, Mm -hmm. God is, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, Elohim created. But the but the but the the, the the name Yahweh Adonai does not come into the picture into chapter two. When it says the Lord God created the heavens and the earth. Yes. There's eleven times in chapter two that the Lord the word or the, the title or the name Lord, Adonai, is used in the creation 11 times. And even though they knew what it meant, do you know that Yahweh, thank you, Lord, was not revealed until chapter 34 of Moses, mm. when he was on the mountain, mm. when he broke the first law, and God says, remember, that he went up to the mountain and he came down, the people were committing sexual immorality and all kinds of stuff, and he threw, <laughs> he threw the Ten Commandments at the, at the foot of the mountain, and he dealt with them. Then God says, I want you to take your hand, and I want you to carve out two stones, and I'm going to write the same commandments on them that were on the first, that you broke. <laughs> mm. <laughs> you broke. 
And, and the Bible says that God told him, I want you to meet me in the morning on top of the mountain. And he was there. And when God came, he, with his finger, he wrote, or with the power of his finger, he wrote the Ten Commandments and he declared, I am God, I am Yahweh, I am the Lord. In other words, he was revealing his name to him. Mm -hmm. So for the first 11 times we see, watch this, the Lord God made the heavens and the earth. The Lord God caused it to rain. The Lord formed man. The Lord God planted. The Lord God grew or made it to grow. I had to stop here this morning because I saw something that it blessed me, but at the same time, we've been saying how God formed, the Lord formed man with his hand. How many mm -hmm. times have you heard that? Mm -hmm. God took dust and he formed it. Well, when I looked at the word grow here, he formed it, asa. But when it says he made it to grow, it means to sprout like a plant coming from the ground. Mm -hmm. Remember we saw that movie? It was mm -hmm. a movie that, um, uh, um, I think it was the Spider-Man movie mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. we saw mm -hmm. a clip where uh, the Sandman, how he became the Sandman. Mm -hmm. And that was, it, that was, that was, that was very deep, powerful. yeah. It yeah, took me right yes. back to Adam. Yes. And it's, it's a possibility, now. watch this now. It was it's a possibility that God didn't need to put his hand on the dust to make it. He simply commanded it and it grew. Adam mm -hmm. grew out of the dust, out of the clay. Mm -hmm. He shaped it because the Bible says that he squeezed it. Well, God's power squeezes us together to mm -hmm. hold together. Mm -hmm. But anyway, have you want to take that? And because here we have the, the, the Hebrew word samach, that he made it grow, is, and this is beautiful, it is talking about the righteous water that is enclosed. Wow. The Lord, the Lord, the Lord made man, made him to grow, and he made him to be righteous, to hold the water of the Torah, the word of God, and to close it in, to keep it. The Lord took. So when we look at the word Adonai, let's look at oh, the name Adonai. It is talking about the sovereignty of God. One of the prayers that is said in the morning is that you are, what it says, Adonai Eleheinu Melech Olam. He is the sovereign of the universe. Hmm. He is the sovereign of all that moves. Nothing can happen without him when we talk about the name Adonai. So this is the key. Where is Adonai, Yahweh, seen? In the very first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, which is the Aleph. What's interesting is that the Aleph, that very first letter, is like our A. But it comes out, watch this now, it comes out to be 26. In other words, the letter is 26 by itself. So every time you see the, the letter 26 in the Bible, you'll see that God is involved. It represents him as the strong one, the number one. Aleph where we see Yahweh is speaking about the unity that God has with his creation. He is the leader. Like my wife said, he is the master, but he also represents all that is. The Lord is the one that builds all things together. Without the Lord, there would be nothing. So when we look at it, when we look at it, look at this. Adonai, in the Bible, you'll find the first letter of that name is the tenth letter of the Hebrew alphabet, which represents the hand and power that created all things. It is the only letter that is self-sustaining. What I mean by that is this. It, it looks like the Yud, the 10th letter of the Hebrew alphabet, looks like our apostrophe. It is our apostrophe. Uh, the apostrophe is the only letter that is self-sustained in English. Mm -hmm. Right? When you write, this is Martha's soup. Mm -hmm. You write Martha apostrophe on top, mm -hmm. and then you put an S. That apostrophe in the Hebrew represents the name of God, and God himself, because God doesn't need any line to hold him up. 
And here's the best part. You will find, if you look at the Hebrew alphabet, please do. Go on, go online. It's there. It's free. They're putting it out there like never before because the Jews know that if they don't put this out there, the Messiah won't come. That They know that. But didn't Jesus said that he wouldn't come back until this gospel is preached to all the nations? Yes, that's correct. Yep. He's a Jew. He's speaking the same thing. If you look at every letter, you will find the Yud, the apostrophe, is attached to every letter in the Hebrew alphabet. You cannot have any letter in creation without the name of Yahweh being attached to it. Amen. You know, we're going, we're going to continue this, the Lord, tomorrow. And it's, I just want to um, conclude today with this short video giving you a, another understanding uh, or the same understanding <laughs> of who the Lord is in our life. And remember, Doshama. yes, and remember, we're talking about, he said, love the Lord. That's right. Love the one that is self-sustaining, self-existing. That's what Yehovah means. Mm -hmm. The one that is self-existent. Amen. Until we meet again. Shalom. Shalom. For thousands of years, every morning and evening, Jewish people have prayed these well-known words as a way of expressing their devotion to God. They're called the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. And as for you, you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your strength. We're going to look at the key word here, Lord, written in all capital letters. This is the personal name of Israel's God. We first learn the meaning of this name in the story of Moses and the burning bush in the book of Exodus chapter 3. God appears to Moses and he commissions him to liberate the Israelites from slavery. And so Moses wonders, what if people ask the name of the God who has sent me? And so God responds, tell them, Ehyeh has sent me to you. Now, that Hebrew word Ehye means I will be. In other words, God's name means that he is the one who is and who will be. God's existence doesn't depend on anyone or anything else. This God simply is. But it will sound kind of strange for Moses to go say to the Israelites, I will be has sent me to you. Only God can say, I will be. So in the next sentence, God tells Moses the version he should say aloud, Yahweh, the God of our ancestors, he has sent me to you. Now, that word Yahweh is the ancient Hebrew form of the verb he will be. And this is the personal name of the God of Israel. It appears over 6,500 times in the Old Testament. Now, here's what's interesting. Over the centuries, Israelites wanted to honor the sacred nature of this divine name. So, as they read the Hebrew Bible aloud and they came to this name, they stopped saying Yahweh and instead started saying the Hebrew word for Lord, which is Adonai. Now this practice has been continued throughout the centuries. And so later, when people started translating the Bible into English, they adopted the same practice. Instead of spelling out the divine name, they translated it as Lord spelled in all capital letters. Okay, you got that? Good, because there's more. Ancient Jewish scribes wanted to prevent anyone from even accidentally saying this name aloud when you read the Hebrew Bible. And so they came up with a visual device to remind you to make sure you say Adonai. They took the four consonant letters of the divine name. These letters correspond to our English letters Y-H-W-H. Then they inserted the three vowels from the word Adonai and combined these together to create an artificial hybrid word, which if you pronounced it, it would say Yahuwah, but no Israelite ever said Yahuwah. It's simply a visual reminder to say the word Adonai. Now, it gets more interesting. Much later, Christian scribes came along who didn't know that Yahuwah was an artificial word. And so they began to say it aloud and spell it in their writings. This is the word that eventually entered into English as Jehovah. It's a word many people still use today. But the main thing is the word Lord in all capital letters is an indication of the divine name. Don't confuse it with the word Lord in your English translations that's not in all capital letters. That is the actual Hebrew word Adon, which just means Lord or master. This word can refer to people like kings or the master of a servant, even a shepherd over his sheep. And sometimes biblical authors will use this word to refer to God, like in the phrases, the Lord of all the earth or the Lord of lords. But behind all of these words, 
words. Yehovah, Lord, Adonai, stands the original divine name of the God of Israel. It refers to the one who was, who is, and who forever will be.